This week's video covers one particular part of the centering process, which is called coning. If you've been watching me for a while, you'll have seen me do this a lot whenever I'm throwing pots. And whilst I have explained what this does and how to do it in previous videos, I've never made a film that's dedicated solely to it. From the hows and whys, to speaking about the general theory showing a variety of hand positions, and how to fix and correct a few common issues that arise. As always, this process has helped by having very thoroughly wedged clay, which is another technique I've discussed in one of my old videos, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Wedging clay gets rid of any air pockets and makes the material completely homogeneous in texture. Wedging your clay properly is the foundation of throwing on the wheel, yet coning the clay, like you'll see me do throughout this video, is almost an extension to it. It can help take a lump of clay that feels slightly odd and uneven, despite the clay being wedged and centred well, and make it spin far more smoothly beneath your hands, and arguably make it easier to throw with. I've got quite a lot to get through in this, but hopefully by the end of this video you should have a much better grasp on how to cone clay. Essentially, coning is really just about moving the clay up and down, nice and evenly, like this. Like any way of making pots, potters all over the world will do this in slightly different ways with their hands positioned in different places around the lump of clay as they manoeuvre it. Yet, regardless of these differences, we are still all doing the same thing to the clay. Clay itself is made up of tiny particles called platelets. Before the clay has been wedged and coned, these platelets aren't necessarily all aligned. Yet, when the clay is wedged, and particularly when it's coned up and down, these particles begin to line up and knit together, making it more cohesive, more controllable and more plastic, and thus easier to throw with. And you can really feel the difference beneath your hands between a lump of unconed and coned clay. So, with the lump roughly centred and the base nicely sealed, the coning can start. I begin by pressing in towards the base with the sides of my hands to push the clay up into a ball that sits within my hands. I then squeeze with all my fingers and my palms and move them upwards with the clay. Initially the top might look bumpy like this, but after a number of cones that should disappear. The cone is then pushed down at an angle by my hand on top as my left hand remains cupped around the piece of clay supporting it. As I cone the clay up, I pinch in from the front with my middle finger and ring finger. The clay is then compressed upwards, with my hands never lingering in one spot for too long, as doing so will cause the clay to dry out. So I'm squeezing around the base, forcing the clay into a more conical shape, and then I press from the front and the sides, increase the wheel speed, and then compress the clay up. My left hand then remains in place, and I use my right hand, supported by that left hand, to push the top of the cone down. Now you may have noticed that I'm not actually pushing the clay directly down, but instead I angle it to one side, but more on that in two moments. First though, I just want to reiterate how crucial it is to use enough water during this process. If you don't use enough, like you can see here, the section you hold will spin more slowly than that below, as dry hands and dry clay stick together and drag. This can cause the top section to rip off, which can also happen if you're squeezing too hard or working too slowly and letting everything dry out. To fix this, as long as the break point is dry, they can be slammed back together and the whole lot compressed back into the initial lump, resetting the coning process, ready for another attempt. So let's get back to why I lean the clay over as I press it down. Once it's reached a reasonable height, I cup the top with this portion of my hand, pressing the base of my thumb against that highest point to keep it rounded, and then I use the side of my fingers to tilt the piece of clay to one side as I cone it down. So once again I quickly cone it up, and then press it down whilst angling it to one side. It's strange, but you'll sort of feel the clay being pulled back into the centre as you do this. But by leaning it to one side, as the clay is coned down, the material gathers in the bottom of the piece of clay, as it's compressed. Whereas if you compress the clay directly downward, the material gathers in a lump just underneath your hands. With experience and with soft enough clay, this can be easy to deal with, but when you're learning and if you are using particularly firm clay, this mushrooming 
as it's sometimes called, can be surprisingly difficult to overcome, as in some cases it can overlap the lump of clay towards the base, creating a void that encircles this piece of clay and you can trap air, slip or water in a pocket that's created, so we definitely want to avoid that, as it will only make the throwing hereafter much more difficult. The clay in this particular clip is much firmer than the stuff used throughout the rest of this video, and sometimes it can take a number of cones upward to get it to a sufficient height. But as long as you bend it over as you push the clay down, it should form into a nice neat shape rather than collecting in an uncontrollable lump directly beneath your hands. Now, you can also use a sponge on the outside if you prefer. It can be soaked with water so your piece of clay definitely won't dry out, but by doing this you sacrifice the use of your full hand, which means you don't have quite as much control over the process. You can try and hold it whilst using the rest of your hand too, but personally I've always felt like this feels quite awkward and clumsy, so I prefer to work relatively quickly and keep my hands moving. This way there's not really much of a chance that the clay can dry out. You can also push the clay down in a different way if you find it more comfortable. I cut both of my hands around the top, lean the cone over and then press it down with my thumbs. It's drawn up in more or less the same way, and then I push the cone of clay from the back with my thumbs, lean it over and then guide it back down. Another thing I do before I cone, and sometimes in between cones, is round off the top of the lump. It should have curving, sloped sides. As if you attempt to cone up a piece of clay like this with a flat top, you'll almost always end up with a divot in the top like so, which, depending on its severity, can trap air, slip and water. As the cone is compressed back down, in some cases the trapped liquid can shoot out splattering you, or it can remain trapped inside only for it to be discovered later on when you're pulling the walls up or forming the internal base of the pot. So making sure the top is rounded before you begin coning will ensure that the top remains rounded as the clay is forced up. Sometimes, instead of fetching new water, I scrape the slip that's on the wheel head up onto the cone to keep both your hands and the clay hydrated, so neither part sticks to the other. It's worth noting too that for much of this process, my hands are interlocked to some degree, be it one thumb straddling the other or the bottoms of my hands bracing against each other. Then when I use the side of my hand to push the cone down, it's resting against the thumb of my left hand. Essentially, the more I can connect both of my hands, the more stable they'll be, and the greater the chance the clay will conform to exactly what we tell it. As I squeeze and lift the cone up, I also brace my arms on the plastic tray of the wheel. I even lean my upper body weight onto my arms to help keep everything rigid as I move the clay up and down. Sometimes, if you're working with very soft clay, it may only take one cone for the lump of clay to feel truly centered, and there are other times where you'll feel some sort of inconsistency deep within the piece of clay, and it can take four or five cones before that's dealt with, and you'll gain an intuition about this with experience. The last thing to discuss is wheel speed. Generally, as I cone the clay up, I increase the speed, and then it's kept steady as I push it down back into the shape I want. Just like learning to throw or spiral wedging, coning is a skill in itself. And whilst you may see many different ways of doing it on the internet and in person, ultimately the aim for all of us is the same. And what's most important is finding a technique that's comfortable for you. And one that works too, of course. Coning your clay properly should help you throw better pots, as the material is more aligned, more responsive and more plastic, yet you can still overdo it and cone the clay to a point that it becomes oversaturated with water, so it loses its structural integrity. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please let me know in the comments. Good luck coning your clay and throwing better pots, and don't be too precious. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.